Hey everybody, I want to focus today on something I call the hidden DAX trap. And this is a situation that if you encounter without warning is probably going to make you feel like you're losing your mind because your DAX is going to look right, but it's not going to work. And so what I want to do today is walk through when that occurs, what you can do about it, and in the process, talk about some general DAX best practices. So let's first take a look at what we're working with here. What we've got is we've got about 10 years of data from the Internet Movie Database. And our fact table is pretty simple. It's just got some rating data and some um, budget and gross data. And that's what we're going to be looking at today is worldwide grosses. And here we've got our extended date table um, and a couple of dimension tables that we're not going to work with today. So it's just going to be a time intelligence analysis just based on the date table and the fact table. So if we go up here, what we want to do is, is something really common and really simple. Is We want to take our, our total worldwide grosses, which if we look at that, is just a very simple aggregate sum measure. And we want to convert that into a percentage. Um, so the way we do that is just we take the numerator, which is that total worldwide gross measure. And then we take the denominator, which is the, the total measure, removing the context from the year uh, filter. So that's what we've got here. And I, I use remove filters. I think it's more intuitive when you read the code. But if you prefer all, that works just as well. And then what we do is just divide numerator by denominator and get the result. And so if we, if we take that measure and we drop it into our table here, you'll see that it, it does exactly what we expect it to. That we get 100% at the bottom, and we get the, the years converted into their individual percentages. So, so far so good, no problems. Let's take a look at a similar situation where we go by quarter. And this could be useful in the sense that from a movie perspective, there's often hypotheses that summer movie season is different than the beginning of the year. And then as you get toward the end of the year, toward Oscar season, that's different. So you might want to look at it by quarter. And again, we've got the exact same measure here, just with removing filters on the, the quarter number rather than the year. And if we uh, take a look at that and drop that measure in, that also does exactly what we expect. So no traps, no problems. So let's take a look at a third case, another really common case where we want to look by month and year. And again, same measure as, as before, this time just removing the filter on month and year. And so let's drop that one in. And all of a sudden, it doesn't work. And we can tell what's not working about it because we know that the worldwide gross measure works. So the, the numerator is working fine, but the denominator isn't. And in each of the previous cases, remove filters, remove the filter properly. But here it's clearly not. And so what we can do is we can actually test that test that out by changing what we return here in the result. And if we if we go here and punch in denominator, and keep in mind this is going to be formatted in percentage, so it's going to look a little funny, but we'll see if it returns what we think it's supposed to. And what we should be getting in this case for the denominator is the same number in every column, in every row. And it should be equal to this total. And it's, it's not. And so what we can tell is that it's not removing the filter on month and year. And the reason for that, you can look at it and think, well, maybe it's because this is text. But we know from the previous one that quarter was also expressed as text. So it's not simply that it's text. But what it is, is that this needs to be sorted. And so if you if you drop this field in without sorting it, it's just going to sort alphabetically. And so in the extended date table, and let's take a look at that, at that field, 
called Month and Year. Here it is. And if we look at it in, in the sort by column, we'll see something interesting, which is we'll see that that column is sorted by a numeric column called Month and Year. And that Month and Year column, when you sort one column by another, that sort column actually becomes part of the filter context. And that's what's, what's throwing this off. And so if we go back to our measure and we look at removing the context of month and year. So let's drop into that measure. And remember, we need to change this back to result. Okay, so it's now returning the right thing. And now if we go here and remove filters, and we also remove that month and year column, that numeric column that we're using as our sort. And now if we just click accept and take a look. What we'll see is now we get exactly what we should. We're getting the, the month and year calculated as a proper percentage. And so we know now that removing that, that filter context takes two fields to do when it's sorted. So one of the things, if you're, if you're paying close attention, you can look at and say, okay, well, instead of, instead of having to do two fields here, why can't we just remove filters on the entire date table? And the answer is you could. And that would work for each of the three examples that we talked about, because you've got a single column here and you're just removing because each of those columns is part of our dates table by removing all the filter context on that that table it works for all three cases but it's actually a bad idea and as a general DAX principle what you want to do is only remove as much filter context as is needed to get the result you want and I'll show you why that is because in many cases, you're not going to want to present this in a tabular form. You're going to want to present it as a matrix. And you're going to want to nest, for example, year, month, and year. And when we do that, we need a little bit more complex measure because we've now got two different granularities in the same column. So this, this measure looks complicated, but it's really not. It's basically just a slight extension of what we've already done, which is these are the denominators for the different granularity. So this removes the filter context for month, and we've got both, both measures here that we need to remove that. We've got the filter context removed for year, and then we've got to remove for the entire table. And so what we do here in the switch statement, the switch true, and if you remember for switch true, you, you want to go from most specific to least specific. So month is our tightest, most specific scope. And so that's where we start. So if, if we're looking here at month, we want to remove the context using those two fields that we identified. If we move up to the scope of year, then we want to remove the context on year. And if we're looking at the total, we want to remove the context on the entire table. And so we do that, and it works exactly right. But now let's take a look at what happens if we were to take and remove the context on the entire date table. And so we'll get rid of the measure that's working correctly. And I've got another measure here that I can drop in that if we take a look at it, it removes the context on the entire table in all three cases. And what we'll see is that that is really a blunt instrument that is over over removing context. And so instead of instead of now calculating the contribution of each month to that year, it's calculating the contribution of that month to the entire data set. And that's not what we want. And so in this case, removing context from the entire table is really a blunt instrument where a scalpel is needed. And so that's going to be the case 
in many instances where you've got a matrix and you've got to be carefully controlling what context you remove. To just blanket remove the context on the entire table is going to cause these sort of problems. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope when this situation comes up, which invariably it will at some point, that you recognize it as the hidden trap that we've talked about today and you're able to avoid it without the same frustration that it caused me when I first saw it and couldn't figure out why my DAX wasn't working properly. So as always, uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.